Billy Kane. He's been in many Fatal Fury games since the first one, and he's the right-hand man of Geese Howard. While he appears in the first game, his costume is based on his appearances in King of Fighters 97 onwards. You can't really see his back, but the no smoking symbol is definitely there. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, you know, last time they had this special camera showing off 2D nice and close. Uh, they even mentioned the fact that it's a special camera. But by zooming in, you can see all the detail, even at her size. I thought that I was out of a job for a second there. Uh, but in this direct, they, they mentioned that uh, there's a texture on the back of his jacket, but just tell you to take his word for it. It's interesting. Not that I distrust Sakurai by any means, um, but uh, I would hate to see that hard work go to waste. So why don't, we, uh, why don't we take a look at that as well as a couple other things that I kind of picked up while I was checking it out. Now, the camera that I'm working with here isn't perfect, but if we loop it around, it should be very apparent and very clear what is going on with the backside here. It should be stated that not only is there a no smoking sign on the back of his jacket, but it also says on the top, real bout, and on the bottom it says the future is now. And that's interesting because a lot of the banners in the stadium itself also share those messages. And also, if you never took the time to explore this stage, there is one little special unique texture that is available to you, the player. If you looked straight to the right, you can see the sign over here that says, Welcome to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, which is a nice little hidden Easter egg. Also, want to show off the stage from up above, you can see that the foreground is missing a lot of environment. This is not one of those VR ready stages. So you're not missing out on too much by what's behind you. Also, you can see that there's a KOF with the Smash Brothers logo laying in the middle of the stadium. It has more of an oval shape than it does a circular one. And again, that's probably because of a depth of field type effect. And also the building in the back of this stage is completely flat. And in the industry, it's occasionally referred to as a card. But if you've never heard that term before, don't be surprised. There's lots and lots of terms within the game industry to refer to these sorts of environments, such as cardboards, flats, and backdrops. And one thing that I found way more interesting than any of this is this character over here named Choi Bungay. Now, I'm vaguely familiar, but I know that this character typically has these sunglasses on at all times. And the developers of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, for whatever reason, took the time to model eyeballs underneath those sunglasses. And you can see here that his eye color is brown. Now again, to catch you up in case you've never seen the show, that's pretty significant because there are characters who could have eyeballs but don't, such as Captain Falcon or Roy Koopa. And as for Terry himself, well, when you take the camera inside of his head, you can see that he doesn't have a fully modeled set of hair. And this is also kind of interesting as well, because in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, Link had a fully modeled head of hair underneath his cap, despite the fact that you were never able to see underneath his cap. Whereas with Terry here, has certain animations in which he does remove his cap and does have a fully modeled head, thankfully. So to see that the model is swapped out is a little surprising. And here's a little bonus thing that I left out of the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate episode. And if you haven't seen that, I'll have links to it in the video description and the end cards here. But yeah, one of the things I totally blanked on was doing a zoom out of the Castlevania stage. Maybe it was because there wasn't too much to see. I know I didn't deliberately leave it out of the episode. But here's how all of that looks. Now, if you want to see stages like the Great Plateau or Magic Cant, you're going to have to check out the main episode that came out a couple weeks ago. And if you choose to subscribe, uh, the next episode that I should be covering is Luigi's Mansion 2 or Dark Moon. It's gonna be a bit of a mini episode because the game is a bit jank, but that's okay because a lot of stuff that's at the very beginning of the game has a lot of content in and of itself. So, hope you stick around, and if you're a longtime fan, just want to remind you I have a secret channel that you should check out. And as a little experiment, I'm going to have scheduled streams where I play against you guys in Super Smash Bros. as well as just play random games. It's always going to be on Sundays at 1 in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you whip out that time zone calculator. But you're not allowed to tell anybody that's going to be our little secret. Anyways, uh, I'm going to get going. Hope you enjoyed this short little video. Maybe I'll do more in the future as DLC starts to come out. It all depends on how this video does. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you again very soon.